Amen. Hallelujah. Bring it in the spirit of worship. Good. Oh, it's going to be good tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. God is good. Let's just see what happens. Amen. I'm honored, brother. I'm here by the I'm here by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Miracle, anointing, prayer. All right, everybody, let's get started. 701, it's time to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody, to the house of the Lord. I can always tell when it's springtime because... There's lots of talking and there's lots of excitement in the air and everybody is a buzz. Yes. So uh, the Lord is getting us ready for the new season. He's sending all the bees around to pollinate and to get everything ready for what's getting ready to happen. Tonight we're so excited because Brother Willie's going to be bringing the word. Yes. Pastor Noah is going to be bringing the word to the youth. Yes! And uh, we're in a season of just focusing on worship and focusing on the heart of worship and, and why we worship. And you remember that God brought the Israelites out of Egypt into the wilderness so that they may come and worship. When Jesus had to go through Samaria, he said, I have to go through here. And there ensued a discussion about worship. And she says, you Jews say that we, you worship in Jerusalem, but we Samaritans say that we worship here on Mount Ebal. So which is it? And Jesus says, I tell you the truth. There's coming a time, and now is, when the Father is seeking those who neither worship in Jerusalem or on this mountain, but those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so, Lord, we pray for that spirit and truth worship to happen tonight. Body, soul, and spirit, you created us. And so, Lord, I pray right now that you would make our spirits come alive, Lord. I pray that there would be a reviving of our spirit man, that our spirit man would, would kind of spring up and say, Woo, this is my time. This is my time to spring into action and to, and to be in charge and to be in, in control or, or, you know, um, governing my soul and my body and so we say right now let the spirit of the lord invade this place in jesus name and everybody said amen welcome to the house of the lord hallelujah hallelujah give god a shout up in here somebody say god is good all the time and all the time god is good amen there's nobody greater than Jesus, right? I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. I still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater than you. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Come on. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find no. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I searched all along, couldn't find no. Greater, nobody greater than you. Search 
searched all over, yeah, 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 yeah. I searched all over, couldn't find no body. I looked high and low, still couldn't find no body. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater. Searched all over, just the brothers couldn't find nobody. Come on. Come on, brothers, I can't hear you. Come on, brothers. Wow, you're gonna let the sisters outdo you tonight. Come on, sisters, come on, show up. Our oh, brothers, y'all weak tonight. Come on. Look at the ladies. Look at the ladies showing out. Because they know he's greater. Come on. All right, brothers, we're going to give you another shot. Brothers, sing it with me. I search the soul. That's it. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, brothers. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. That's it. Everybody sing. Everybody sing. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, yeah. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Hallelujah, that's it. That was a good place right there. Nobody's greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you.
chapter 12, verse 32, Jesus said, If when the Son of Man is lifted up, He will draw all men unto Himself. And Jesus, I thank You that as You are lifted up on the cross, Lord, You drew all men unto You. Lord, many deserted You at that time, but You drew us all in with the passion with which You loved us with the passion that you showed there, with the, the fervency, Lord, with the completeness, with the fullness of what you took upon yourself. You took the punishment that was due to us. You took upon yourself. And you paid and you paid and you paid and you paid the price. And you said it was for the joy that was set before you that you endured the cross because you didn't intend to stay there. You intended for it to mark all of history. But you didn't intend to stay stuck to the cross and the shame. But you rose again. And now you said it's better that I go to the Father because if I go, I'll send you the promise. I'll send you the promised Holy Spirit. And so, Holy Spirit, we welcome you tonight. We welcome you in this place. We celebrate you. We thank you for the witness that you bring of Jesus. We thank you that you fill the atmosphere. You fill the intangibles. And right now, I pray, God, that you would go out into the highways and byways, Lord. To any watching online, I pray for the healing presence of the Lord to move in your midst right now. With the sound of my voice, I declare right now that chains are breaking, God. That infirmity is breaking off of people. That word curses are being broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus. That the blood of Jesus paid for your freedom. It paid for your healing. And Lord, I declare right now that chains are broken, Lord. I declare right now that that circumstances and situations are being turned around, Lord. I thank you. Daniel prayed and he was delayed three weeks for his answer. But Lord, the answer came. And Lord, I thank you that tonight you're cutting a channel for answers answered prayers mm. hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord come up higher come up higher Come up higher, says the Lord. Come up higher, says the Lord. Come up higher. Come up to where I am. Come and see from my perspective. Higher. 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 Says the Lord. Come on up higher, yeah. Come up higher. 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 Says the Lord. says in Isaiah it says my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts Lord I pray that there would be a raising up that we would lift our vision higher Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have something, Papa? I know you guys are. We got to kind of hurry up. No, I'm just kidding. We don't have to hurry up. But uh, keep those lights down, please. Because I didn't think he was done yet. Uh, anyone else sense that? Someone else raise their hand with me, please. Okay. All right. So I just felt like uh, 
I was gonna, I'm gonna call him on his word right here about miracles uh, to be released. Because, you know, we're coming into a new day. We have to, you know, church is good. You know, we get to do this. Willie's going to teach us about worship, as Pastor Tim did last week. And, and we got a chance to do that and, and, and love on him. But at the same time, don't ever forget that Jesus Christ in you is the hope of glory, the Bible says. So, Jesus, we're giving him our full attention. He gets all the credit. But we're going to be little Jesuses all over the earth doing the things in the will of the Father here on the earth. So I know, I want to first say this before I deal with the miracles that are needed in this house. Uh, so some of you came in, totally didn't really feel like worshiping. You're up against things that have been pulling you back. It was hard to come in. You knew really coming tonight would be the only, I mean, coming is like you had to kind of really push it to get here so I had this teaching I remember this teaching back in the day we used to call it opposite spirit remember that one when we always would say you have to think opposite about what's happening in your life that is you know contradicting the word of God in your life and the thought of God so you have to you have to come up against that thing and become the opposite of what it is. And that's the true nature of the Christ in you when you start to see this thing being developed. So who is under uh, like oppressive things or kind of like having, it was just kind of hard, be honest, come on, we, we all go through it. I tonight happen to not be in that place. I've got some faith, Pastor. I've got some faith to believe. Someone raise hands if you are under that kind of opposition, oppressiveness. Steve, come up, Steve. I want you to come up here because you were the one of the people I saw. Amy, come on up. Come on, be honest. God's going to give you a breakthrough tonight. He's going to show you that, there, that the things that you have been crying out for the good things of God, it's like a refreshing season is coming to the body of Christ again. That's right. So uh, I need some women to pray for the women. Some of you powerhouses, Pastor Carrie, Mary, my honey, Steve, I just want you to just stand there. Because I remember Steve coming in last week and saying, I'm coming because I need to, this more than what I've been accustomed to. He's looking for more of the spirit that is, uh, you know, that is available, that he knows to be true. And he hasn't heard it maybe from the places he's hang out, hanging around with. Yeah, so you miracle guys, you come on up too. I know, Randall, you got to come on up here. Come on over here, Carol. You're going to come on up here. Marie, are you okay? You good? Because don't miss your moment if, it, if you need some. I see you there, you know, really pressing in. Okay, so just go ahead and release that Jesus Christ in you, prayer partners, and, and release the things over them. Okay, brother, I just want you to stand there. I want you to keep your eyes focused on the Lord. He's going to do something. Let your hands down. Just kind of be in a receiving mode. And so, God, you heard it. You heard it right from his lips. I heard it last week. And so, Lord, as I lay hands on Steve, I pray, Lord, that you're going to fill him with the thing that he's been hoping for. Fill him up, Jesus. Fill him up. Fill him up with the power of your Holy Spirit that he's been longing for. He knows there's something more, Jesus. So it's not me. I'm not pushing... I'm just releasing the Spirit of God that's with inside of me. Fill them up, Lord. Right here, right now. Just receive it, brother. My hand shakes a little bit when I do that. It's just, I just feel the power of God. Jesus, touch Steve now. Fill him. Let him be refreshed. There it, ooh, that's it, brother. Refresh him. Just feel the power. Just receive it. Drink it in like a tall glass of cheese water. Fill them right now. Fill them right now. Fill them. Take a deep breath. body of Christ needs to move in this power that you have made available 
through the blood of Jesus and the infilling of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, do the work in Steve. Everything he needs, everything his hopes and desires are now, Lord, all those hopes and desires, I pray. And to, to see and to have an encounter with you, that's even more than just the word. It's the word and the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. Truly touch my brother in a powerful way. In a powerful way, Holy Spirit. Powerful way, Holy Spirit. Where's Noah? Noah. Come here and pray for this man right here. I want to. I want to pray for Carol. Did she get prayer? Carol got prayer. Pray for him. Release infilling and infilling. Yes, yes, yes. Pray for Carol, Lord. Carol needs a miracle too. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, Carol. It's going to happen. It's coming your way, girl. Just believe it. We're just going to break that off of you right now. Come on, come on. Come on, it ain't so bad, girl. It ain't so bad. Come on, come on. Got to get that thing off of you. That happens too many times. Come on, you got to be opposite spirit. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to say, sometimes we just got to deal with truth. We got to know why, why the glum face, little britches. Come on, put your hope in God. Hallelujah. So, and then... God says that you have not because you ask not. Ask, 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 ask. Ask of me. Ask of me and I will give you the nations as an inheritance. Oh, God, we pray for right minds, God. We pray for right hearts, Lord. We pray for right spirits, Lord. We pray right now that you would renew within us a right spirit, God. We thank you. We thank you that you renew within us a willing spirit to believe. God, that you change all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Come and do what you want to do. say miracles what's that miracle song uh, you did an old miracle song what was that one yeah no i think what that one the old uh what was the other guy
want to allow room for the Lord to do what the Lord wants to do. There was a time on the Sabbath that there was a man with a shriveled up hand and Jesus called out to him and said, be straightened out. And it was straightened out. And the religious said, you can't do that on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, watch me. <laughs> We're going to get ready to receive our tithes and offerings. If I could have the ushers come forward, I would greatly appreciate the help. Glory to God. One of, the, one of the ways that we show honor, one of the ways that we show allegiance is by bringing something. You could go to something and not exchange anything, not give anything, and um, you could never be accused of it. But once you have transacted, once you have sown, once you have uh, put something in, you are complicit. And so we want to be complicit in believing in God. Uh, there was a book that was written, uh, you know, if they put you on trial, would there be enough evidence to convict you that you were a Christian, you know? And um, would there be enough evidence to convict you of being a giver? Not just a casual giver, but a generous giver. And Lord, I pray that you would teach us to be generous and that you would teach us, Lord, the principle of sowing and reaping. Whatsoever you sow, you will also reap. And so, Lord, I pray that as finances are sown, I pray that finances will be reaped. God, we need finances in this world to live. Every one of us needs finances uh, to live. And so, Lord, as we sow those into the kingdom, I pray that we would also reap the reward of it. And, Lord, that there would be blessings, that you would bless the works of our hands in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Come on, let's give to the Lord. Well, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I release a blessing over every giver, over every seed. Lord, I pray that you would receive it. And Lord, I thank you that you uh, see the heart with which it was given as well. In Jesus' name, and I bless your people. Amen and amen. God bless you tonight. Let me have the children come forward. Come on, kiddos. You're going to be a special blessing tonight, and the anointing of God and favor is going to be upon you. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would bless our kids as they go to class, Lord, that your anointing would rest upon them, that you would give them favor with God and man, Lord. We bless them in Jesus' name. Hey, why don't you get up and go greet one another? you got about a minute and a half to go do that. Go be a blessing to those that are around you. Come on, welcome them to the house of the Lord tonight.
Kayla. Hey, Mom. Guess what? Do you know what May 12th is? Um, is it Mother's Day? Yes, it is Mother's Day. And guess what we're doing at church? What are we doing at church? We are having a brunch at 9.30 a.m., followed by service with Rebecca Stanley for Mother's Day. It's going to be an awesome time, and I get to be here with you. Yay. Hey, Mom, what are the kids doing this summer? We're going to kids camp. Woohoo! What is it called? It is called Fire by Night. When is it going to be? It is going to be June 17th through June 19th. Are you going to have a guest speaker there? Yes, we are. Who Do you want to know who? Yes, I want to know who. Do you? Yes. Do you? Just tell us. Okay, it's Noah Thompson. Pastor Yay! Noah is going to be our guest speaker at Kids Camp. We're going to have games, s'mores. It's going to be a blast. Mom, are we doing anything to fundraise for Kids Camp? As a matter of fact, we are. Today, right after church, kids, we are raising money for camp, and we are going to be selling Sonoran hot dogs. You can get a combo for just $10, which will include the Sonoran hot dog, side of homemade mac and cheese, chips, and a drink for 10 bucks. You can't beat that. That's a good price. That sounds so yummy. Hey, Mom, guess where you're not going? You're not going to Gen Z night, because it's only for Gen Z. It's going to be April 14th at 6 p.m. here at the church, and we're going to be hearing an awesome word from Pastor Bethany. Sing alive. You are going to lunch right after church next Sunday at Culinary Dropout in downtown Gilbert. See Shana for details. Who enjoyed last week's service with Pastor Tim bringing in our new series, Cultivating a Heart of Worship? We will be having Pastor Willie this week. Hope to see you there. 7 p.m. At FOLF, you actually don't know what time it is. We are doing a new segment called FOLF Letters, where you can write an encouraging word to someone and drop it off at the box at the merch table. This week's FOLF letter is to... Angela! From Pastor Carrie. She wants you to know that you have been doing amazing this week and she loves you. Isn't Angela awesome? Thanks, Carrie. We hope you have a great week. That was really great. What I love the most about that is I actually mean all that, but Angela wrote that letter to herself. <laughs> just as an example. But I feel all those things with that just like makes me laugh. <laughs> so, oh, Pastor Carrie, how nice of you. <laughs> um, really quick before Pastor Willie comes, um, how many of you ladies are coming to the conference? Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I know I'm going to be changed. I need this time. So what I'm going to do is have you guys pass. This is so that we can start praying so that all of our hearts are ready. So starting the first session, we're going to be way past where we normally are. Okay, we're going to just go like way further. That'd be great. So men, you can pray for the women's conference too. Don't worry, men. You're going to have your own. You'll be okay. Last but not least, um, gosh, it's just a few more weeks, a couple more weeks away till Angel and Anna are here with their kids. And we went to go look at the house, and it's literally like being built. So pray that it's ready by the time they get here. Um, but this is really cool. Bethany made this sign-up sheet with very detailed, but with um, a little check mark next to items that have already been purchased, like a rice cooker or a coffee pot or coffee cups. That way, we don't get 20 coffee cups or 20 coffee pots or 20 rice cookers, right? So these are going to also be, um, do you want one? Just raise your hand. Okay. That'd be great. Let's do that. So this will be helpful. And then when you guys, let's say you know you're going to buy something, if you could email admin at fountainoflife.tv or text the church phone, 480-310-3581, and say, I'm buying this. It's going to get checked off when it arrives. 
But that way, we don't have 20 of them. It can be good used, you know. We just don't want to, like, receive 30 couches. You know what I mean? Or, like, here's my whole thing. So, yes, praise the Lord. Glory a Dios. Hey, let's have Pastor Willie come on up and teach us about worship. He already demonstrated. Young people, you guys follow Pastor Noah. You're heading out tonight, but we got Doc in the house tonight. Amen. Amen. We love it. We love Pastor Willie. Man, come on, give God a hand praise and praise him. They got to watch when they give me this mic because this is, this is a dangerous mic because I can feel it. This one of the mics you can feel. I'm like, Lord, they need to give me that mic when I sing. I can feel it. That's what's like, nah, brother, uh-uh. No, we're not doing that, brother. <laughs> God is good. How many, how many are just glad to be here tonight? I mean, how many are glad just being in the presence of the Lord? God is good. I wanted just to give honor to God, and I just thank him for counting me faithful, putting me in the ministry. Never take it lightly that it was some uh, 38 years ago that I was called uh, to the ministry, and I re remember uh, uh, years even before that, I was uh, seven years old, and I sat on my dad's lap, and I, I was asking him questions about why he wasn't preaching anymore, because my dad was a preacher, but he had stopped preaching for a while, and I asked him why he stopped preaching, and then I was on, the, I was on his lap at, at seven years old, and I I looked him in the eyes. I said, Daddy, if you don't preach, I'm going to preach. At seven years old, I told him that. I said, if you don't preach, I'm going to preach. And they know that was, I was, a, I was a prophetic decree. That I was actually speaking over my life. And then, some, then 11 years later, I got called to the ministry. And I remember when I first felt the call of God on my life. <laughs> uh, I, I told my daddy, like, you got to say, my father, old school, y'all. He won the ones, hey, if you don't know you called, don't even, get, don't even call me. And I was no different even though I was his son. And so they, they took the, being called to the ministry a really, really big deal. Like it's serious. Not like today where people just jump in seminary and think they're ready to do a work for God. And oh my gosh. But back in them days, they were serious about that call. And I remember my dad, I called him, I was in Rota, Spain. I was in the Navy at the time. And I was in Rota, Spain, and I, I called my dad. I said, hey, hey, Dad, uh, I got something to tell you. He said, what you want, boy? Now, you got something from the South, you know what I'm saying? So they say boy a lot to their son. What you want, boy? What you want? I said, you know something? I think I'm called to the ministry. He said, you, do, you what now? What, what, you, what you say, boy? I said, I think I'm called to the ministry. Well, when you know that you know that you know that you know that you're called to the ministry, you give me a call. Click. Hug up on your boy. He went, click. I'm, too, I'm like 20,000 miles away. I'm like in Spain. I'm like, wow. I need to call him when I know that I know. That I know, that I know, that I know. <laughs> so, so, so about six months later, I had the opportunity to preach my first sermon. It was called, Wait on the Lord. You know, Wait on the Lord. And it was, and it was I just preached it, and I felt good about it. And I, and I came out of there saying that I know. Then I gave him another call. Dialing the number, saying, I know that I know that I know. I know that I know that I know. <laughs> Know that I know that I know that I know that I know. So I called him up. Ring, ring. Yeah. I said, Daddy, he said, what you want now, boy? 
It had been about six months. So I got something to tell you. What you got to say? I said, Daddy, I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm called to preach the gospel. And then he went back. He's like, hey, hey, boy, I tell you, I always knew you was called. I'm like, well, I was like, well, thanks, Dad. Now you're telling me. And he said, he said, let me tell you how I knew you was called. I said, tell me. I thought it was like really like, like heavy revelation, like, like from heaven, like from, like, come on. Jesus like spoke to, I mean, like put something real heavy to my daddy. He said, the way I, see, see, let me see, let me tell you how I knew you was called. See, when you was born, uh -huh. I looked at your head and I saw your head and I looked at it on every side the left, the right, the back and the front and I knew you was called I said daddy my head told you I was called he said your head told me I was called told me you was called to preach I will say thank the Lord for that revelation, Dad, that my head told you I was called. It's been 38 years that I'm still preaching the gospel. Give God a praise. I haven't got tired yet. So I'm even, I mean, we really honored to be here, to be amongst the pastors and leaders today. I always want to give honor to our very own apostle and, and Papa Jody in the house today. Praise the Lord. I want to give honor to them. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Always want to give honor to where honors do. Amen. A great, great, mighty woman of God. Just so honored to be here with you all. And, and then our very own pastors, Tim and Pastor Tim and Pastor Kerry, give it up to them. So just, again, just honored, so honored to be here. And I, I was just thinking, I was like, man, that Pastor Tim started last week. And then I got, I got the revelator next week. Randall, you know, everybody know he's the revelator, Randall the revelator. I'm like, man, I got to, Lord, you got to help me. I'm coming, I, I, got, I, I, got to, I got to go in between. I said, Lord, I need you to help me tonight. And I believe he's going to help me, amen? Let's pray. Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you would speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind and I pray that you will get all the glory. It be none of me and all of you. I pray that I would decrease and you would increase tonight, Father, for your glory. Speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind. God, I bow and I promise to give you all the praise. Let there be healings and let there be continued healings and continue flow of your presence tonight in Jesus' mighty name. So tonight, I, I want to I wanna do some teaching tonight, but I'm believing for some impartation and you experience God's presence tonight. So I want to preach for a little bit and teach for a little bit, and then I want to get back into the presence of God. Uh, the Lord gave me a song for tonight, and, and, and what's so crazy about it is that Papa Jody actually set it up when he talked about, when he started talking about the presence of God. The Lord gave me a song about his presence tonight. A time so refreshing in the presence of the Lord. And he gave it to me the other night. And I was like, and it stayed with me. That's what I, that's what I knew was the Lord. And so I wanted to kind of we'll do some of that and see what God does at the end. And I just want to enjoy God's presence as we, as we just continue to move forward. Amen? <clears throat> and so uh, uh, when Pastor Tim came to me uh, uh, probably a couple months ago, he called me and said, hey, would you be, would you like to preach uh, during the month of April, and we're going to be talking about worship. And I was like, well, okay, I'd love, to, I'd be honored. And uh, so since then, I've been meditating and thinking about uh, what, the, what I should speak on or what, what God would have me speak on, so very honored in that regard. And, and so I started thinking about the word cultivate. Because he's saying we're cultivating the heart of worship. We're going to learn how to cultivate, so you know me, I'm like an, I don't really call myself, I'm, a, I'm like a word guy. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not saying I'm an etymologist like that, but I'm a word guy. I like words. I'm in the word. That's what I look at the word cultivate. 
And I saw three things that stood out in the word cultivate. I heard the word grow. I heard the word develop. And I saw the word improve. Grow, develop, improve. I was like, yes. This is cool. So I think, when I talked about the word cultivate, I remember something my dad told me when I started playing the piano at a very young age. I was just banging on it, you know. He saw me banging on the piano. I said, Daddy, how do I sound on the piano? He says, well, boy, <laughs> I'm telling you, that's how they do it down stuff. Well, boy, I tell you, you banging on it, yo. Keep, keep, keep banging. <laughs> and he used the word cultivate. He says, all you need to do is just keep cultivating. In other words, keep developing. Keep improving. Keep getting better. That's what I did. I just took what he said seriously. And so now, you know, playing the piano. You know what I'm saying? But I remember those words he talked about. So I think about the same thing. We talk about cultivating the heart of worship because it's all about, you know, us developing and growing in it. So it's, it's wonderful thing about worship is that it's something that you actually can grow into. And the thing about worship is that, it's that people are at different stages when, they, when it comes to worship. So what I want to do is I want to talk about, one, uh, the purpose of worship a little bit. Then I want to talk about the meaning of worship. Then I want to give a backdrop of a story of one of, we, we call the greatest worshipers that ever lived in the Bible by the name of King David. Who the Bible said he's a man after God's own heart. But I'm going I'm to give it another, I'm going to come for it from a, from a whole other angle. Might mess you up a little bit, but you're going to get there. Amen. God is good. So let's talk about the, uh, uh, according to uh, the hymnologist, I don't know if you guys heard of him, uh, Eric Routley. You guys ever heard of Eric Routley? He is the expert, or was, still is, you know, the expert on hymns. He was the one that, like, the foundation of all hymns kind of started from this guy. That's why they call him the uh, hymno, hymno, hymnologist. Yeah, hymnologist. That's an expert in hymns. Is that deep or what? That was heavy. I just thought I'd share that with you. I was trying to be deep. No, I was. I was. But anyway, because <laughs> he got a deep name and a hymn, hymnologist, Eric. But this is what he said. He said the purpose of worship is to codify, unify, and glorify. Is that tight or what? I was like, man, I would use that one. That was good. So codification refers to teaching and admonishing. So we're teaching and we're admonishing. Like we, we do very well here. Uh, unification refers to uniting the church and the body of Christ. So we see that worship is about teaching and admonishing. We see that worship is about unifying the church and the body of Christ. And glorification, which we do, we know about, has to do with God or glorifying him, or adoring him, or ascribing all respect and honor and glory to him. So the purpose of worship is to codify, unify, and glorify. Amen? Some say the purpose of worship is to create an intimate space between people and the Lord, allowing him to speak directly to the heart. So we see worship is a, it's a space, it's a, it's a time where we can speak, but God can speak directly to our heart. How many times in worship were you standing before God and all of a sudden he starts speaking to you? He starts talking to you. He's giving you direction. He's letting you know you're going to make it. He's letting you know everything's going to be all right. And he's do it doing worship. See, for me, Willie, I take worship very, very seriously. And that's why it's very confusing to me when people ascribe worship to singing. That's a problem. They, they just, they just, they, they rele, they've relegated worship today to singing. Or they relegate worship to a service. You know, we're going to a worship service. 
but we keep thinking it's something we do versus a posture we need to have. See, worship is not a doing, it's a posture. Amen? And what's that posture? It's a posture of surrendering. It's a posture of obeisance. It's a posture of bowing before the Lord. It's a posture that says, uh, you are everything and I am nothing. It's a posture that says that uh, you are infinite and I am finite. Oh, you ain't talking to me today. Are you hearing me? That's, 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 that's worship. When you, remember, when you realize that he's, I'm nothing and he's everything. And without him, I can do nothing. I can be nothing. So, so I got another, I got some more on this, which I thought was really cool. So to worship also means to show a lot of love and adoration for something. So what are you saying, Willie? When we talk about worship, just the word worship itself, uh, everybody's worshiping something. Let's keep it real, y'all. There's something that you love, something that you adore. Uh, People who are believers, you know, or religious people, you know, they are worshiping all kind of gods, and people can worship other people and things. Because worship has to do with whatever you're giving a devotion to, whatever you're giving your time to, whatever you're giving your money to is what you worship. So you got to be careful, Netflix. There's some people that uh, they worship Netflix. They worship Prime Video. They worship gaming. Come on now. They, they worship their job. In other words, they're giving their, all of this time and attention to it more than God. That's what you worship. And God says, no idols. And anything that you deify, God has to come for. So be careful who you're giving your be careful who you're giving your adoration to. Be careful who you're giving your devotion to. Because if it takes away from him, he said the one of the Ten Commandments is no other gods before me. Am I am I in the, am I in the book? So be careful. Because that's everything that you love. You may love it more than God. That's why I always say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Worship is an extreme form of love. It's a type of unquestioning devotion. Meaning, so if you worship God, watch this, then you love God so much that you don't question him at all. Because you imagine getting to the place where you love God so much that you don't even question him. See, that's real worship. It's not songs, not singing. It's a holy devotion to the king of kings and the, the Lord of lords. When Job said, naked I came in this world, naked I leave, the Lord give, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. But before that, the Bible said he worshiped and said that. He didn't just say that. The Bible said he worshiped. And if you look up the original text, it said he bowed when he said that. He bowed and he surrendered and said, the Lord gives. The Lord takes away and blessed be the name of the Lord thy God. In other words, he was surrendering his will to the will of God. He was saying, Lord, bend this will to conform to your will. Bend it, God. My God. So, again, it is a willingness to surrender all. Are you willing to surrender all? We're talking about worship tonight, y'all. We're not talking about singing songs. Thank the Lord for songs and that encourage us and inspire us. But if we miss it in our surrender, then if we've missed worship altogether. If we've missed it in our holy devotion and not questioning God at all, without question, then we've missed our worship. Are you hearing me? Am I helping somebody tonight? Amen. Praise God. So with that being said, if you could turn with me to Psalms 51. That was just the introduction. 
Good, is that good? Is it okay? God is good. Just want to just set it up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go to Psalms 51. So the, the, the way I want to open this up is we spend so much, we spend a lot of time talking about David, King David. We talked about him being the greatest king that ever lived. What would it look like for David today, though? Because uh, King David today would uh, probably be on YouTube going viral. Because as much as we love David, his legacy was stained. He had a stained legacy. What do you do when you have a stained legacy? You think, it's, I can't come back from this. There's, there's no way. He did something that caused his legacy to be stained. And there was, a, there was consequences, too. People died. People lost their life because of David, because of what he did. And we all know the story. And if you need that story, we're going to, we're going to go into Psalms 51. But if you need a backdrop, you can go to 2 Samuel and the 11th and 12th chapter of 2 Samuel. And it'll give you the backdrop of where I'm going with this. We all know the story with David. He just decided one day to take a break. See, there's a difference between taking a break and taking a rest. Because <laughs> if you're resting, you're still watching. But if you take a break, you might make a mistake. Are you hearing me? You might lose focus. You, 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 you might get distracted. So we see how David got distracted with Bathsheba and I'm taking her in and, and uh, they got, got intimate with her and, and, then, and then he knew, she knew, he knew that she was married to Uriah and then he had him killed. That's deep. Not only committing adultery, but he committed murder. How would David look today on YouTube? But well, we say he's the greatest king that ever lived. Are y'all walking with me tonight? A man after God's own heart. I'm just saying. So, so I want to go into the story. I want to go into Psalms 51 and want to show you what David did that got him back to God. And I want to show you how it wasn't important for David to regain his status. He didn't care about status. He didn't care about reputation. All he cared about was his relationship with God. And because of that, God said, he's a man after my heart. So you look at the word, when you think about the word after, it's either before, after, or after, like you're desiring or you want something. So I believe it's that he was going after God. Like it was a desire for God, not a before, after. A man after God's own heart. So are we at, are we at Psalms 51? Do you have it? My brother can put it up whenever you're ready. Amen. The writer says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to that loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. So this came out of, if you go to, if you go to uh, 2 Samuel, the 12, you don't have to go there, I'm just talking. Uh, you can just go there in your leap because of, because of time. So 2 Samuel 12 is when he gets confronted by Nathan, the prophet. And Nathan just get, is given this story and allegory about this lamb and, and the lamb getting hurt and slain or whatever. And, then, and David gets all mad and said, whoever that man is. You let me know who he is because I want him dead. And Nathan said, it's you. You know what you did. And David broke and, and called his sin out at that point. But notice something about Nathan. David was in a dark place, and God sent a prophet to him. See, the word, if you look up, if you look up, if you look up Nathan, his name means light. So God had to bring light to our dark place 
in David's life to get him to see what he did before God. So we come, that's why, so we run, because of that, we run into him saying, have mercy upon me, O God, according to that loving kindness, according to your uh, uh, multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. And then he's going through this process to reconnect with God again. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. And then he gets it real with God. He said, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. Against you, not against my mama, not against my daddy, not against my wife, not against my kids. He said, against you. I did this. I did this, God. And he said right here that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when you judge. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin that my mother conceived me. Behold, thou desirest truth, and in inward parts, and in hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. And then he goes to this process of saying, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Look what he's saying here. He's, want, he's wanting to get God. Watch this. He's getting clean so he can get God. So he can be king again. He's got to get him clean so he can get his reputation back. He wants to come back. He wants to connect with God again. Amen? He says right here, he says, uh, he says, uh, that the bones which thou hast broken me rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Then he says, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. I want to stop there. I noticed three things here that David did to really set himself up to connect with God again. The first thing he said, he says, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And then he said, the second thing, he says, renew. He said, create. And then he said, and renew a right spirit within me. And then he said, Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. You notice he didn't say, restore unto me the kingdom. He didn't say, restore me back into the ministry. He didn't say, get me back on the pulpit again. Get me back before the people again. Talking to somebody in here. He said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. God, I remember the time it was just me and you. God, bring that back. I remember that time when I was a little boy. It was just me and you. And I was playing that guitar. And I was just singing. Bring me back to those. Bring me back to those days. I want to come back to the heart of worship because it's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it because it's all about you, Jesus. That's the reason why I believe that David was a man after God's own heart because he only wanted to reconnect with the king again. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. And you think he stopped right there. I mean, you can stop right there and be like, wow, David, yeah, okay. You're back, man. You're back. But he wasn't done. He said right here in the 13th verse, and this is important right here. He says, then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will be converted unto thee. He said, God, for what you just did in my life, 
I'm going to tell it. I'm going to let everybody know that ain't right with you so they can get right with you. I'm going to take them through the same process that I went through to get back to you, God. I'm going to convert some folks back to you. If your worship doesn't move you to tell somebody about Jesus that don't know him, then, it's not, then you don't know about worship. Worship has to move you to seeing your life changed. If your worship doesn't move you and the joy of your salvation doesn't move you to see a life change, you better question your worship. You have to. Because immediately when David came out of this rest, came into this place of renew, restore, create, he, he, he's going through all of this, and then he says, you know something, what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell somebody about you. I'm going to get some folks right with you. Are you hearing me today? So further down, he goes back to this posture again that I believe is the key to David being restored back unto God. So if you could go with me down to verse hmm, 16. He says, for you desire not sacrifice. I would have gave that. He says, you don't delight in burnt offerings. You're thinking your sacrifice gets God's attention. Not when it comes to your relationship. That's not what gives God's attention. He says, I don't, I don't, he was like, I ain't doing nothing for me. He don't delight in burnt offerings. I, I, I thought that was pretty heavy. I'm like, man, I like Papa, he, I'm giving up some stuff. He ain't, that ain't good enough, God? He says, that ain't good enough. And then what he said right here, the next verse, he says right here, Verse 17, he says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. See, that's the sacrifice. That's the real sacrifice. Because David was big on burnt offerings. I could do that. You know, I could kill a thousand sheep right now, God, under you. God was like, yeah, that ain't good enough. He said, if you really want to sacrifice to me, he says, I want to see a heart that's broken. I want to see a heart that's contrite. Give me that! Then I know you on track. Give me that! Then I know you mean business. Because he said a broken and contrite heart he will not despise or look down upon. Or he would not disappoint. <laughs> a broken and contrite So what was this whole thing? What was this whole process about? It's called repentance. The reason why David was able to connect to God through renewal, through creation, through restoration, because he repented. What is repentance? Repentance means to go the other way. Can I go deeper? Repentance means to change the way you think. See, he was thinking one way, and it got him in trouble. He had to change the way he was thinking. He said, I got to get back to what I lost. I got caught up in, I got caught up in the, the work of God more than the God of the work. I got caught up in the things of God than the God of things. I just, I got so busy. Hold up and all these sacrifices, all this stuff I'm doing for the church and all this stuff I'm doing for the ministry. I'm busy, busy, busy doing things for God, doing things for God. And God says, I'm not impressed. I want a broken and contrite heart because I will not look down upon and I will not despise. Am I helping somebody in here today? Go with me to the book of Acts as we wrap this up today. We can get back on the keyboard there and be a blessing. Amen. Go to Acts the third chapter. Because we're talking about repentance. And we want to talk about what repentance connects you to. You have to say amen. Acts the third chapter. This will be my last 
of verse eight scripture. You have it say amen. In Acts 3, 19 and verse and 20, it says, Repent, therefore, and be converted. See that? So I, I, I was preaching out of the Old Testament, but I thought I'd bring you to the New Testament to say it's, it's that scripture. I didn't know that the best scripture is for me because I was talking about the Old Testament. He's talking about David. Well, let me bring you to the new, baby. Let me help you out, sister. Let me help you out, brother. Repent is in the New Testament. I said with somebody, because there's a teaching out there that says you don't have to repent anymore. There is. There is a teaching that says you don't have to repent. Jesus did it all. Well, he did do it all, but he still say repent. Because <laughs> repenting is not for him, it's for you. You need to change the way you're thinking. You need to go the other way. <laughs> and then he says, when you do that, you'll be converted. When you think about the word convert, what are you thinking about? You're changing something into something so different, it doesn't look like what it did before. That's convert. Like from black to white, from positive to negative. Convert. That's what we call, that's what we call Christians or believers. You know, they've been, he, he converts, or he was converted. In other words, his life was so changed. He doesn't even look like anything or resemble anything that he had before. That's why I'm so blessed at Team Challenge. I'm looking at these guys who, who give their life to the Lord, who get, who repent, and they are converted, and their lives look so, I could show you pictures. If I had time, I'd put some pictures up of guys that was the before conversion and then after conversion. I mean, you don't even, I mean, it's such a, a, a contrast. You're like, that's you. I mean, when I tell you like night and day, like night and day, that's what, when you truly repent, that's what happens. When you truly go the other way, you don't even look like you did where you, first, where you first were. He says right here, that your sins may be blotted out so that what? The times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. You know who's, that's a favorite scripture of somebody here. The Apostle Adora. I was thinking about you when the Lord gave me that. Repentance is the precursor. That's the, that's the step before. Because it's the, remember, worship is about posture. Repentance is like resetting you. It's like a recalibration. It's like bringing you back so you can experience his presence. And not just experience his presence, but experience a refreshing, a refreshing in his presence. How many say, brother, I could use a refreshing tonight? I could use it. All right, stand up. God bless you. I was on the piano the other day. Worship and prayer or just laid the song of my heart. Times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. And it's really simple, just like one, just like a one or two liner. And I just felt a God's presence that we were singing that or more. I felt that it would be appropriate for tonight, so and then we'll see what God does after that. Amen. Times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. 
times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Hey, times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Oh, Lord. From the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. That's the whole song. Times of refreshing. It comes. It comes from the presence. From the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. Time. Times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing comes, comes from the presence of the Lord, 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 from the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. Yay! From the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord the Lord, the Lord, hey, yeah, hey, from the presence of the Lord, oh, Lord, from the presence of the Lord. Just lift your hands right now. Is receive his presence. Receive. He's here. I just felt him. I felt a wind come in the building. Just receive. Receive refreshing. There's some people that are tired, that are weary. Tonight you came in and you, you, from the message you changed your heart. You repented. You changed the way you're thinking and, and now you, you, you're, you're postured a refreshing from God's presence. Receive the presence of the Lord. Be refreshed. Be refreshed. From the presence of the Lord, oh, be refreshed, be refreshed from the presence of the Lord. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. 
I just want to yell. Nothing else. Nothing else, Jesus. Nothing else will do. I just want to yell. Nothing else. Nothing else, Jesus. Nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I just want you, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry when I just say the most I'm sorry when I sang another song take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. places that we've been in. We know God there's no place that we can go that we can't come back from if we just repent. We can come back to that relationship. We can come back to that heart of worship. Because it's all about you. I'm sorry Lord for the Think I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the things that I love about church and that I love about Pastor Willie is that he's not just a singer or a musician, but he's a worshiper. 
I remember uh, when you came, we did the audition. We had to make sure that he wasn't just a musician because we're a worshiping church. And he, by himself, on the stage, started worshiping. Where is that? I think I have it somewhere on video. I recorded it privately. We could bring it out. But it's one of the great blessings to not have somebody get in the way of worship, but that helps you facilitate worshiping the Lord. And if that's all he really wants, he's not here to impress anyone. He's here to just help cultivate, help us grow, help us develop. Help us to bring him all of the glory that is due. Thank you, Pastor Ray. We love you, Doc. Amen, amen, amen. Love you. We love the culture of worship. And we love you guys. And I hope that you are refreshed in the presence of the Lord tonight. Benefited from being here. Never take for granted the presence of the Lord. Just being able to gather together to worship his name. God bless you guys tonight. We love you. I pray that you have a safe, safe trip home and the wonderful rest of the week. Everybody pray for Randall. He's going in for surgery in the morning. And Bob goes in for surgery on Friday. We've already prayed for their miracles and for the Lord to just flood the room, right? That's that's what their prayer is, is that miracles would happen all around them. And I know they do, you know. We're just, uh, you guys are so filled with the presence of the Lord. So be blessed in the presence of the Lord. We love you guys.